One of the great advantages of a bear market is it brings you the gift of value. As you can see, Target, which was recently overvalued, has now become inexpensive. And one of the great benefits of a research tool as powerful as the FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool is you get to see the price of the stock in relation to the intrinsic value of the business. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, also known as Mr. Valuation. Once again, it's my great pleasure to bring to you a list of a dozen stocks today that I consider to be gifts from this current recent bear market we've been in. These are 12 extremely high quality stocks that have become attractively valued as a result of this correction. So let's go ahead and get into fast graphs and let's take a look at these 12 companies. I have them in alphabetical order here that have become attractively valued as a result of this bear market. We've got Amerisource Bergen, a healthcare distributor, Ameriprise Financial, Asset Management and Custody Bank that was spun off from American Express. We got Cigna Corporation, Healthcare Services, Cummins, the diesel manufacturer, Fortune Brands, Building Products, of course, FedEx, Air Freight and Logistics, Lowe's, and this is one that'll be interesting as I get into Lowe's, Magna International, Auto Parts and Equipment, Omicron Group, Advertising, Stanley Black and Decker, Industrial Machinery and Tools, are known for their tools. Skyworks Solutions, which is a very attractive semiconductor. And then finally, as I featured in the opening, Target Corporation, as the bear market came. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly go through these 12 companies. I'm going to look at them from the perspective of value, future growth potential, and dividend coverage. So I'm going to be very short with these, I'm going to look at two metrics, operating earnings and operating cash flow, and talk about the safety of the dividend as well as the growth potential of the company. So we start with Amerisource Bergen. And Amerisource Bergen is a little off topic because it has not really participated in the bear market, but it was significantly undervalued for a long time. And it's been rising to fair value, but this stock can still be bought at a very attractive valuation. Dividend yield of 1.27% earnings yield of 6.68%, and we're expecting growth going forward here of about 10 and a quarter percent over the next couple of years, two, two and a half years. The company is triple B plus rated and has a very consistent history of growing the earnings. From a standpoint of dividend coverage, which is very important because the company also has a very strong dividend growth record, from the standpoint of dividend coverage, we're going to look at it from a standpoint of operating cash flow. And as you can see, and, and I'm not interested in price here, I'm interested in whether the cash flow, the orange line, is higher than the white line, which is the dividend line. Dividend growth for this company for the last 20 years has been over 25% a year compounded average growth, and the average growth rate's been over 28% a year. The next candidate I have is Ameriprise Financial. This is the spinoff from American Express. The bear market has brought this into an incredible valuation, especially given the amount of growth the stock has. It's expected to grow at over 13% a year, and you've got a very strong margin of safety. The blended P.E. ratio is only 11 on this company. It's worth at least 15, in my opinion, which I would put the stock at a fair value of around $350 a share, and you can buy all you want for 261 It has a 1.7% dividend yield, earnings yield of 8.91%. Looking at the stock from the standpoint of dividend coverage, if I look at operating cash flow, the company generally has covered its dividend with operating cash flow for at least the last seven or eight years, so very strongly. So I think the company's in good shape from a standpoint of dividend coverage. The next company that I'm going to look at here is Cigna. Cigna has just begun paying a dividend. It's just started paying a dividend but I do expect that dividend to grow. The bear market hasn't affected it much because the company was trading at a pretty good margin of safety in the first place, but I do consider it very inexpensive. We have close to a 2% dividend yield, earnings yield of over 9%. It's A- minus rated, and it has a very long and consistent history of double-digit earnings growth, which is something I really like. It's expected to continue growing at double-digit rates into the future. If I look at it from the standpoint of dividend coverage, I look at operating cash flow is definitely strongly covering the dividend. 
And I'll just take a peek here at free cash flow, which is also even, and the reason I did that is because they did have a down year of free cash flow, but they were still covering their dividends. So Cigna looks to me to be a very attractive long-term investment opportunity at these levels. The next company on the list is Cummins, the diesel manufacturer. The bear market has brought Cummins down from being overvalued to fairly valued and now being undervalued, in my opinion. We have over a 3% dividend yield, the PE is around 12.7 blended PE, and an earnings yield of 7.87%, approaching 8%. I consider it very, very attractive. The company is semi-cyclical, but it is expected to grow at you know 9 to 10% going forward, uh, 20% this year, followed by 14% next year before we have a, a down cycle. So at least for the next couple of years, this one looks extremely attractive to me. From a standpoint of operating cash flow, once again, we see strong coverage of the dividend. Operating cash flow is significantly higher. The, the cash flow payout ratios are only about 24%. So it offers a 3% dividend yield, 8.61% operating cash flow yield as well. So I consider Cummins very, very attractive here. The next stock is Fortune Brands. Fortune Brands, home and security company, but it's also really building products. If you're not real familiar with this company, they build all types of products for, for new homes. A quick glance at the company's website, if you're not familiar with the company, is that you can see that they have so they have brands in plumbing, doors, outdoors and security, cabinets, etc. So it's a building products company. It has an extremely consistent record of growth at over 20% a year. The bear market has brought the price down to I consider to be absurdly low levels. If I look at it going forward, the company is expected to continue to grow at over 11%, and that makes it very, very attractive at a blended P.E. of 13.8, a dividend yield of 1.38, and an earnings yield of 7.2%. Looking at it from a standpoint of dividend coverage, operating cash flow covers the dividend like a blanket. So I like Fortune Brands very, very much here. FedEx, you know, I think has an extremely bright future. The bear market has brought it into extremely attractive territory, in my opinion. They did suffer a little bit for the last couple of years and during COVID, but right now the company offers a 1.5% dividend yield, Blended P.E. of around 10, earnings yield of just under 10. It's a triple B rated company. Going forward, growth is expected to be double digit over 11%. And the company carries a very, very high margin of safety, a very strong margin of safety, in my opinion. Looking at it from a standpoint of operating cash flow, covering the dividend, the payout ratio is very, very low on this one. The dividend is extremely well covered. And I do want to point out that the dividend growth has been 15 to 16% at compound average or average over time. So I do consider FedEx to be very, very attractive at these levels. I'm going to skip Lowe's and come back to it. I want to go to Magna International, and I have a reason for doing that, and I'll share it with you. Magna International has really, the bear market has really given us a gift of an extremely low valuation of 10.6 times earnings, blended PE a 9.41% earnings yield, and the dividend yield is now over 2% for this A- minus rated company. It's got, had really good growth going through. They did suffer a little bit during COVID, but I do believe this company is extremely well positioned for the future. Growth is expected to be a strong 24%, and it has an extremely high margin of safety. This might be the highest returning potential stock in the entire group here at these levels. Getting, you know, going into to dividend coverage, the company's cash flows cover the dividend very strongly. The dividend record since the Great Recession has been very, very strong. I like Magna International. It's one that I think you'd be Foolish not to take a harder look at it. It's also A- minus rated, so it's a very high-quality company. Omnicron, the advertising company, has also benefited from this recent bear market. The stock has dropped enough to where I think it provides a great margin of safety. Dividend yield of 3.74%. Earnings yield of 8.9%. P.E. is only 11 The company's triple B-plus rated. And as far as dividend coverage, if you look at it from an operating cash flow standpoint, the cash flows really strongly cover the dividend. So I think we got a real safe dividend here as well. The next one we're going to look at is Stanley Black & Decker. Stanley Black & Decker has really benefited from the recent correction. It was overvalued. It corrected to being still fully valued to overvalued. And now with the recent bear market that we've been experiencing, 
The company is available at a good margin of safety. It's got expected to grow at almost 10% a year. The dividend yield is over 2%, earnings yield over 7 blended P.E. of around 13 times earnings. Looking at it from a standpoint of operating cash flow, the company's cash flows have very strongly covered the dividend, and even when they suffered a drop in cash flow last year, the cash flows were still strong enough to cover the dividend. So I think Stanley Black & Decker at these levels has become very attractive and even has a, offers you now a margin of safety. Skywork Solution it's the only non-rated company, which means they simply didn't apply for one. But it's a fast-growing semiconductor company. If you look at it from the last you know, 12 or 15 years, 17 years, and plus the estimates, it's grown at about 23% a year. It's forecast to continue growing at about 9% a year. You can buy it with a 1.7% dividend yield, an earnings yield of 8.3%, and a very, very nice margin of safety. From the standpoint of the dividend coverage, again, the company's operating cash flows are more than adequate for them to sustain and continue to grow their dividend. Their dividend has grown at a whopping 30-some percent a year. That includes a couple of really extraordinary years. It's been averaging double-digit dividend growth for the last four or five years. So Skywork Solution looks very, very attractive to me here. Next is Target. I covered Target in the beginning where I talked about the bear market has given us an opportunity to invest in this really powerful retailer, A-rated. The company can be bought at a 15 blended P.E., earnings yield of 6.5%, dividend yield of 1.72, and this is a really quality company. Growth is expected to be about 8% a year going forward. If I look at Target from a standpoint of operating cash flow, covering the dividend, I see very, very strong coverage of operating cash flow. And then finally, I skipped over Lowe's because I want to talk about Lowe's a little bit. Lowe's is really a conundrum. Lowe's is an extremely high quality company. And you know, if you looked at the long-term fast grass, it would still look overvalued with a 15% growth rate. But however, after coming out of the Great Recession, I want you to notice the company has been growing at about 19 to 20% a year. So we've had an acceleration in growth that's happened here in recent years which makes the stock look very attractively valued with a 1.4% dividend yield. Earnings yield is under 6%, but it's got very exceptional growth expected, about 12% a year going forward, which means that the stock might still be a little pricey. But I wanted to show you this because given the quality of this company and the consistency of its earnings growth and the consistency of the company's cash flow growth and the, the fact that it powerfully covers the dividend, this would be one that I kind of throw in as a ringer. It's, you know, if it continues to drop, I definitely want to want to invest in lows. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carmel saying thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking at some really quality dividend growth stocks here with an emphasis on total return going forward. Um, they're not necessarily the highest current income, but they've got great dividend growth and great long-term return potential. Most of them have a margin of safety, and I believe that they're all extremely high-quality companies, and that's the gift of this bear market. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you for watching. If you've been asking me for some good quality dividend growth stocks, I hope I've given you some here that you can research further on your own. Thanks for watching.